Hello and welcome back to another Tasty Blender tutorial. Today we are taking a look at how to make a really, really simple surrealistic type of scene. This was suggested to me from a user on Instagram. I'll put his at right at the bottom. We'll be learning a lot of things today, including cloth, a bit of lighting and some tricks with knife project. Also, don't forget to subscribe. I make these tutorials every Wednesday and I do a live stream every Saturday at 6 p.m. GMT plus one. So. Let's get into the video. So before we go any further, we need to first find a reference. The best place for references is definitely Pinterest. So go on Pinterest and type in interior architecture and you can then pick and choose which one you like. Now, you might notice many of these have either arches or they have some sort of structure that's very circular. And that's usually because circles are very strong compositional elements. So when you find the appropriate example, download it, put it into Blender, have it with you so you can reference kind of what's happening in the scene, understand the composition of the scene. Right now I'm in Blender, so I'm going to delete everything in my scene and I'll start positioning some stuff. First of all, I will set up the camera actually. So I'm going to put the camera there, I'll move it back slightly, and then I'm going to go into my output properties and I'll set the render region. I'll just change a couple of settings here. So I color depth of 16 and zero compression. Render region means that everything that's inside the camera is going to be rendered and everything that's outside, it's going to be unrendered. For the resolution, you can leave it at 1920 or 1080. I'll also be changing my render engine to cycles device to GPU compute, and I'll just go down to color management to look and set it to high contrast. This is just preparation. I'm going to add a mesh, which is going to be a plane. I'm going to scale it up like so. Maybe I'll scale it on the Y axis to just make it a bit thinner. Now I can start thinking about what to do. Remember the shapes that we had. So mostly you're going to break up your shapes with either circles or arches. Now at this point, it's worth noting that we can go into our camera view by pressing zero on the numpad GZ to pull up our camera. And we're doing this because we're going to go into our camera settings, go into the background images. And what I want you to do is find your own PNG of a golden ratio which looks like this. You can move it in front by using the depth and you can just scale it up so it fills out the frame nicely like that. This is important. Why? Because we'll be using this to help us compose our scene. I can now start adding the other elements. One of these is going to be the main wall. So I'm going to add a plane, rotate it by 90 degrees on the X axis, scale it on the X and then pull it up like that and scale it on the Z. So I fill out the frame. Another thing that's very important to know is we'll be using some of these guides and I'll show you how I usually would use them, but there are different methods and uh, different tutorials that can tell you more in depth, which is extremely useful if you want to make compositions like this. I'll create the arc by adding the circle. I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees and I'll just pull it up on the Z axis like that. Now I want to position this circle. So it's basically laying on my plane and I want it to be sort of down here. This is sort of the position that I'm looking for. So you can see where we have almost the same distance from the bottom and the top. Maybe we can scale this bad boy up slightly. So it's like that just a bit down. So it's barely touching that place there. Go into edit mode and select the bottom vertices without selecting the middle ones on the left and on the right. So I'm going to delete those by pressing X and I'll choose those two vertices, press E to extrude Z to make sure that we're moving them on the Z axis and just pull them down like so. So you have this structure over here, press F to connect them. And you can also select all of these and press F to create this arc. We're going to select the wall and the arc over here, we're going to go into edit mode, press one on the numpad to go into front view. And what I want to do is select mesh in the top left corner and choose knife project. This is a trick used by Gleb Alexandrov. He showed it in one of his tutorials. So if you want to 
have a bit more in-depth knowledge about this, go check out Gleb Alexandrov for additional information. When I have my arc knifed into the wall, I'm just going to delete that, click on my plane, go into edit mode, and you can see we have a perfect cut of our wall. Delete the faces, and that's it. Now, I want to give this wall just a bit of weight. There are several ways. I'm just going to do this one that's very quick, just for our purposes. So the first thing, I'm gonna add a solidify, and I'll try keeping it at about 0.085. If I look at a camera, I just want to have a slight bit. I don't want to have it too thick, but I wanted to have it about here. So it's barely noticeable the difference when you look at through the camera. I'm going to apply that, so we get this in edit mode. And when I have this, I'm just going to do a couple of things. I'm just going to select this vertex on the right and connect it with the top right vertex. Press J to join. I'm gonna go into the opposite side, do the same. Now, bear in mind, this is not proper retopology or anything. This is just to make our scene work. So I'm just connecting these, and now I want to connect the top over here. I can just press Control R, so I create an edge on top, move it over there, and then again, shift select those vertices and press J. So I have these. Now I'm gonna switch to edge select mode, press N, and go to item, and I want to loop select or edge select, I don't remember what the expression is, so basically shift alt and then right click, and I want to select the edges that I'll be using the bevel on, like so. So you can see they're functioning. I want to do the same thing on the other side, but I don't want to select these edges right here in the back or the edges of the arc. I'm gonna add a bevel and I'm gonna add a weight. Now you can see if I add a subdivision surface, yeah, not looking pretty good. But if I increase the mean bevel weight, so if I choose the top, edges and the bottom edges that remain like so and increase the mean bevel weight this should level them out now to make this look a bit better just going to increase the viewport and i'll drop down the offset so it's a bit sharper maybe we can go with two segments like that w to shade smooth and we have a nice clean cut creating a back wall which is going to be very simple just select the plane Select the last edge, E to extrude, Z, and we have our back wall. We need to tweak the scene just a bit. So I'm going to select my camera. And what I want to do is I want to match the lower point of this little snail over here with the back of our wall. So with the bottom of our back wall. So it looks something like this. With this selected, we can also increase the size of our arc and we can move it so it's a bit more centered towards this line so we have a nice distribution of these right here following the curve slightly so it's something like this now one thing that's very popular in these so also using spheres using stuff that's not usually found in such environments so i'm just going to go shift s cursor to world origin and i'll add a cube with this cube i'm going to move him here move him up slightly so i'm trying to get to the let's say center or just slightly off the center of the snail here s to scale and i'm going to press Control 3 so it creates a subdivision of three use a cast with a factor of one so it makes it into a sphere and now i can also scale it down so it matches sort of the curvature of our snail so of this quadrant over here and we can reset the position like so. So this is how I would usually do it, just trying to fill several segments and leave a bit of negative space so the whole thing breathes a bit. I want to do one last thing. I saw a lot of curtains in these compositions. You can see it here. You can also see it here in this one. I think they look kind of nice in these compositions. They give a bit of lightness to it. So we'll create a really quick curtain. We're going to add a mesh, rotate it by 90 degrees, push it up. So it's about here, covering. And we'll be trying to form it like so. 
Let's push it back because it's going to be in the back. And we can adjust the length. So in edit mode, press G by selecting the bottom edge and just pull it down like that. We can also match it with this segment over here. So let's say we'll position it there. So we have a nice clean cut. Hover over the top edge, control R, and you can scroll your mouse to create some cuts, some loop cuts. Though bear in mind, we'll be choosing vertices of this plane to create the curtain. So what we need to do is check that we have one, two, three, and we need the ones at the sides to be selected also. So this is not going to be the right number of cuts. We need to go back, control R, let's do like this. I'm gonna select the vertices. Now they're okay. Let me go into the vertex group in the object data properties, this green triangle, add a group and assign those vertices to that group. And that's going to be our curtain pin. Now before we do the final physics, I'm just going to do a couple of things. I'm going to put another loop cut over here. So I have two of these S to scale, and I'm going to pull them up because we'll be adding a subdivision surface like so. In this subdivision, we can bump it to three in the render and viewport. Now, this is a trick of how to create a nice flowing curtain. So you select the vertex, press Control H in edit mode and hook to new object. You select the vertices that you have set as a group and you need to select them each separately. So you get the hooks. If you want to see what a hook does, just select one, press G and you can see it's deforming this vertex. I'm going to select the leftmost hook, Shift S cursor to selected. And now I'll select the rest of the hooks, change my transform pivot point on the top to 3D cursor. And now if I scale them, they're going to scale inside. When I have all of these selected, I can press I, use lock scale. So we set a location and scale keyframe. And let's move to 60, like here. Now I want to press S, X, scale it on the X axis so it tightens up. And I want to move it, let's say, to about here on the X axis again. I lock scale so we have the location and scale keyframe. And now we can start on our cloth simulation. So I'm going to select the curtain, go into my physics properties, and set up cloth. You might see that it disappeared. Don't worry, just go to the beginning of your animation. And now let's do just a couple of tweaks. So I'm gonna choose the shape, pin group, curtain pin. So it's pinning the vertices that we selected previously. And now let's try and press play. Still doesn't look very good, but we can change that. We can actually increase, let's say to four. Let's go back to the beginning of the animation. Maybe we can tighten up these hooks. So I can go again, select all of these hooks, go to frame 60. I can maybe scale them on the X again and move them just slightly to the right. I location scale. Let's retry this. It's just a bit of tweaking. If this happens, like what happened here, you can just choose a random factor over here and just restart your animation because usually it keeps the information from the previous bake. Something like that. We're just trying to get a couple of folds, nothing too major. Let's just light the scene very quickly. So I'm going to go into my world properties, color, environment texture to set up a HDRI. I'm using a HDRI from HDRI Haven, the veranda, which will be available in this project. So if you want to download this project, download the source file for this, I have a Patreon that you can check out and you can uh, check out the project for yourself. Let's go into render view and let's see how this bad boy looks. I'm going to select my camera. I don't need the golden ratio thing anymore, so I can just uncheck background images. And this is it. You know, it's a very simple scene. Another thing that we can do is just split our screen, set up the shader editor. 
And in our shader editor, we go under world. So where it says object, just click on it, go under world. Here, select the veranda or the HDRI that you've chosen, control T. And if you rotate the Z, you can control the lighting of your HDRI or rather the rotation of the HDRI. And we can create some very interesting contrasts. You can see it here, it looks kind of good. So yeah, that's going to be it for this tutorial. You can see that it's very easy to set up. It's fun to experiment with the composition. It's fun to change the framing a bit, try to change the elements. I hope this tutorial helped you out in creating something. So if you want to see the source file, I have a Patreon that you can subscribe to and all of these source files for the month will be available on the Patreon. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and this is going to be it. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.